you guys are so you're going to be so happy that you came today because as an added incentive for people that are taking the time and making the effort to come to VC on Wednesday mornings, you're going to get five points extra credit just for doing the Desmos activity that I'm going to show you in a few minutes because I get a record of who completes the Desmos activity, and then there'll be a place in this week's module we'll all, where I'll add that five points extra credit. Now, you might be thinking, why are we getting extra credit for something that we're supposed to be doing anyway? You would be surprised at the number of students that have not been coming to VC, which to me is absolutely absurd because I think the rule at Cherry Creek Elevation that you only have math one day a week and each of your other, other subjects one day a week is absolutely ridiculous and absurd. I can say that because I'm retired and I came back to help at Elevation because of the huge numbers they had of kids being online. But I think students should be required to come to each class every day. And I think that's one of the main reasons so many of you are struggling. But because the rule is the rule, what can you do about it? You can start coming to instructional support. You guys, half of you have not completed your unit assessment for module seven, which is a problem like this problem, but it's about chickens and pigs where you have to do the graph and then choose either elimination or substitution. Well, this is the problem that I've been doing with students last week and this week in instructional support. I take this word problem just like the one on the test. We work through it together and then those students are able to understand and go back and complete the test. And my warm up question today, my bell ringer, a lot of people are turning in graphs that look like that. No. A system of equations is a separate line for each equation, meaning that you have to have two lines and the place that they intersect is the answer to the question up here. Because remember like in this problem here, we end up with six goats and five ducks, which is the same answer you get by using elimination and substitution. So there is no way that you can do well in your modules if you're having trouble and you don't understand it from the video and the notes that your teacher already gives you. If you don't come to one of these instructional support sessions, there's someone in the waiting room there, Amaiji, you see them. If you don't come to one of these, you don't have to come to mine. You can come to Miss Stoddard's or you can come to Phoenix Tutoring. These are every day, Tuesday through Friday. Every day, Tuesday through Friday. Mine are Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday because on Wednesday and Friday, I help out seventh graders that I teach also. But you guys can't just sit back and do nothing. If you do nothing, your assignments aren't going to be done by March 8th. Do not message me on March 9th saying, what can I do to raise my grade? Because I think you know by March 9th what my answer is going to be. Take care of it now, this week, if no other reason, because parent-teacher conferences are next week. Okay, and I don't think you want to be sitting there with a D or an F for parent-teacher conferences. Okay, moving on. This is what module eight looks like this week. You have three things to turn in, but don't just jump to the assignment. If you jump to this assignment and you say, I have no idea how to complete these four pages of notes, it's because you have to go to this link here, read the chapter, this is an eight page chapter. And as you're reading this chapter on introduction to functions, you complete your notes and then turn it in for 16 points. Here's where the extra credit's gonna be recorded when you finish the Desmos activity that I'm gonna give you next. 
your points will be put there. This is your second assignment for this week. But don't do that assignment until you do the notes and video above it. And then finally, lesson three, the vertical line test, your video and questions are together on that particular assignment. And then notice you always have the IXL every week. Okay, we're gonna start out looking at another video from the Big Bang Theory. And as you're watching this video, I want you to tell me why are these, they're playing this Pictionary game and why are they, they, these guys so confused with the graphs that are being plotted during the Pictionary game? So let me go ahead and bring this over here. And I want you to type your answer in the chat as you're watching this, in fact, I'm gonna, this is a fun thing. So I'm gonna set the chat on public for this little activity. So while you're watching this four minute video, I want you to tell me why are they so confused from their graphs? Now, I am very disappointed that I won't be able to celebrate Howard's accomplishment tonight. Me too, but we'll see him tomorrow. Yes, it's just that in all the years I've known him, he's never had the opportunity to receive my admiration. <laughs> I was excited to see the look on his face when it finally happened. Hang on a second. I'm going to stop my share and reshare because I know that when I've been shared for a long period of time, especially those of you that joined after eight o'clock, I mean, nine o'clock, your screen probably went fuzzy. So now your screen should be sharp. You're unbelievable. I know. <laughs> All right, Pictionary, what are the teams? How about boys versus girls? Oh, that hardly seems fair. Yeah, but I guess any team that I'm not on has a decided disadvantage. Once again, unbelievable. Yeah. Once again, I know. <laughs> All right, round one. Here. Got it. OK. Ready, set, go. Uh, box, uh, window, Batman. <laughs> Batman and Robin. <laughs> uh, Wonder Twins plus the monkey. <laughs> Wonder Twins plus the monkey and Batman. A uh, gift, a uh, present. Present, yeah. <laughs> Can you not get that? In what universe is that a present? It's not a present, it's the present. Look, there's you and me, and it's Penny and Amy. We're playing Pictionary in the present. Oh my God, we're gonna kill them. <laughs> it's a quark glue on plasma. No. It's asymptotically free partons inside a quark gluon plasma. Nothing with quarks. It's an observational rebuttal of the Lambda CDM model of the universe. No. It's a chocolate chip cookie, yes! How could you miss that? Get, hey, if you want someone to guess chocolate chip cookie, you draw a glass of milk next to it. Penny got it? Yeah, only after I eliminated all the obvious answers. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, 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 sausage. Uh, 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 bratwurst? Uh, oh, oh, a hot dog. Penny, aren't you gonna draw something? Relax, we got time, this is so fun. <laughs> there. A solar system. Unidentified flying liverwurst? Uh, now? Soon. <laughs> Come on, Leonard. I am spoon feeding this to you. I don't know. Uh, Casper the alcoholic ghost? <laughs> All right, that's enough. <clears throat> Uh, hand, uh, nail, uh, polish? Yeah! No! No! 
Yeah, the word is Polish. See, look. Polish sausage. As the, the model of the solar system developed by Nicholas Copernicus, a Polish astronomer. And then, finally, that wasn't enough, which it should have been. This is Madame Curie killing herself by discovering radium, who, although she was a naturalized French citizen, was Polish by birth. Excuse me, the word is Polish. See? Small p. Oh. <laughs> So it is. I guess we both share blame on this one. Okay, that, <laughs> I think, I, I love how that represents that a lot of times we get confused when we look at graphs because we don't have the proper like pronunciation or representation of what that graph is trying to show us. So the Desmos activity that we're going to do next, you're going to get a real life, real time example of how a graph represents a movement of a turtle across the water, the sand and the land, because as you change your graph in real life, it's going to show you how the movement of the turtle changes with the graph. So a lot of times graphs are confusing because we don't connect it to the real world situation that it is representing. Uh, one of you, yes, Menku, that's right. They're confused because he interprets the words wrong. Uh, the person who is still named Boogeyman, I am not going to ask you again. You change your participant name to your actual first name, last name, or I will remove you from VC. Okay, I asked you to do that without calling you out during the video, but you ignored my request. So you have 10 seconds, 10, nine, eight, boogeyman, change your name to your real name or you will be reported. Seven, six, five. Okay, good, good, thank you. You guys always do that first, okay? That's the first thing you do when you log in every day is you change your screen name. Okay, we're going to learn about functions, okay? And functions, you're going to learn terminology like input, output, what is a function, what's not a function, and tests that we can do called mapping and tables to determine whether something is a function or a non-function. Okay, please write down two things in your notebook right now because I'm going to remove this screen in about 30 seconds. Type the address that you go to in your web browser. You can open a new window and type in student.desmos.com and then also write down this six letter code and you do not need a space. Capital P six V F U Y case, and then go ahead and log in and type in the code. And I'll overview this activity in about 15 seconds, but I want to leave this screen up for another 15 seconds. Good morning, Chris, but please try to be on time from now on. Okay, Chris, your class started at nine o'clock. Good morning, Lydia, but you're 15 minutes late. Lydia, please be on time from now on, okay? The times are always listed on my homepage. Okay. okay, so this is what you guys are going to be doing. Okay, on the first slide, uh, you're just going to, let me erase this, I drew last. You're just gonna draw a graph over here. So you're gonna use the pencil tool that's provided and you're just gonna say, you're going to start at zero and say, what if my turtle in the first four seconds goes to there and then he just goes straight 
and then he goes at this really steep slope. In other words, you can make up any graph that you want. And then when you hit play, it's going to show you how the turtle movement with the X being time and the Y being his distance from the water, how it matches your graph. Then when you go to the next slide, it's going to give you a graph and you're going to type in what story does the graph tell about the turtle's journey. And then you're going to click share with class and see what everyone's predicting. Then on the next slide, it's going to show you the answer. So when you hit play, I'm not going to hit play now because otherwise you'd know the answer to slide two. And you continue making predictions on each of these graphs. This one is kind of crazy, this graph on slide five. And so while you're doing that, it's going to show me a summary of how each of you are doing. Okay, so right now I can see who is already in. Uh, Remy is in, Natalie's in, McKenna's in, Giovanni's in, Cole's in, Aries is in, Kimora is just starting out on slide one, Gabriel, Evelyn, Celine, Elvis, Navita, and Menku. I'm going to give you guys until 930. So I'm going to give you a full 12 minutes because this activity is a lot of fun and it's going to reveal to you how graphs match the movements and it's going to give more meaning to you guys with what you've been learning. For those of you that just joined the class, there's the website, student.desmos.com. There's the code you type in, and then it'll start you on slide one. You do what it says and get through all 10 slides. And by doing so, you will get five points extra credit added to your grade for module eight for your participation in Desmos. Oh, okay, Chris, I got gotcha. you. Thank you for doing that, Chris. Oh, for you got you guys that just joined in like the last five minutes or so. Let me repost what I said at the beginning of class. I'm gonna put it in the chat. So read what I just posted in the chat if you joined after the beginning of class. And I'm just going to put this up here so I can see how you guys are progressing, but it's not a race. Uh, Chris, you need to get in. I don't see your name up here. Zachary, I don't see you in. You need to participate, Zachary. Get logged into the Desmos activity. Gabby, I don't see your name up here. You need to get logged in.
Here's the information again for you guys I just called out. You took the time to um, log in and be part of EC this morning. So take advantage of the five points extra credit I'm giving you, but you can only get the five points extra credit for completing this activity. Because I do appreciate greatly that you guys made the choice to come to VC. And like I said, I just think it's, it's terrible that Cherry Creek Elevation doesn't require students to attend VC. It should always be required, not a choice. Because just one day a week isn't even nearly enough for math. Got you, Gabby. Thank you for letting me know. Now, I'm going to put the chat back on private, I mean public, because once you finish slide 10, I want you to put in the public chat so everyone else can enjoy what everyone's saying. One thing that you learned from this activity about how the graph matches the movement, the movements of the turtle or turtles. One thing you learned from this activity, type it in the chat when you're done. And you still have seven more minutes. Good, Chris, I see that you're in. Good, Lydia, I see that you're in. I see the majority of you are on slide. Oh, slide five is challenging. I'm gonna give you kudos if you correctly predict slide five with the circle and it'll show you on slide six it'll reveal what happens with the graph on five it'll reveal on slide six Zachary, what's your issue? Zachary, unmute your mic because uh, there is no excuse for not being in on this activity. Zachary, unmute your mic and talk to me, please. Okay, well, Zachary, make sure you write down the web address and the code, and then you can do this after class as long as you complete the 10 slides by tonight, Zachary, you'll still get your five points extra credit. Thanks for letting me know what was happening. No, that's okay, I understand. Sometimes the tech, tech, technology gets in the way. <clears throat>
Oh, wow. <clears throat> Quite a few of you are on slide eight. Good job. You still have four minutes to finish. Remember when you're done, I want you to type one thing that you learned in the chat. <clears throat> Oh, this part up here is incorrect. You get to earn up to five extra credit points. Yeah. Okay, so we got, yeah, Remy and McKenna, please, uh, as soon as you finish, I see you're on slide 10. Write down one thing you learned in the chat. Javon, unmute your mic, please, and say hi. Hi. Javon, what time does your class start? At nine. At nine o'clock. Why are you 30 minutes late? Because I woke up at um, eight. Okay, nine. Javon, you can stay with us for the last 20 minutes, but make sure you watch the recording this afternoon, okay? Okay. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> okay, guys, what you're going to want to do, because we do need to go on, but as long as you finish, because you can go back to this activity after class, and as long as you get through slide 10, because I will have a record of it in my teacher account, as long as you finish this activity by tonight, I will add in the five points extra credit in the slot in your module for this week that says February 24th BC extra credit. Okay, as long as you get this done tonight. Okay, so here's some of the observations that I hope you made. Uh, yes, McKenna put down that there's a, a line on a graph splits, it means there's more than one object being represented. So when you had that circle on slide number five, it actually made the one turtle turn into two because for that value of X, which was the time, there were two different turtles, meaning and 
And we're going to learn that the X values are called the inputs and the Y values are called the output. And in today's lesson, we're going to learn that if you have more than one output for the same input, you do not have a function. So on the graph where the turtle split into two turtles, you cannot correctly tell what the turtle is doing. It's not a function. Now, what did you guys notice when the line got steeper? What, what did that cause in the movement of the circle when the line on the graph got steeper, meaning the slope got greater? What did that cause the turtle to do when the line was steeper on the graph? Anyone know? Raise your hand. What happened when you had a steeper line on the graph? How did that affect the movement of the turtle? Well, hopefully you notice that he went faster. He walked faster because remember, slope is rate of change and he went faster. Okay, sorry, you're gonna have to stop Desmos right now because we do need to go on. Okay, in this video, I want you to write down a couple of things. I want you to write down two things you learned, not in the chat. I want you to write down it on your paper and then one question you still have. And I want you to pay attention to the terms input, output, function, domain, range, and rule. Input, output, function, domain, range, and rule. And how do they connect with variables X and Y? Hi, I'm Rob. Welcome to Math Antics. And, and actually, let me stop the share and reshare because I'm starting to learn that that's make that makes everyone's screen get sharper again. Because if you're sharing for a long time, it makes the student, the participant's screen get fuzzy. In this algebra basics lesson, we're going to learn about functions. Outside of the realm of math, the word function simply refers to what something does. But in math, the word function has a more specific meaning. In math, a function is basically something that relates or connects one set to another set in a particular way. A set is just a group or collection of things. Often it's a collection of numbers, but it doesn't have to be. A set could be a collection of other things like letters, names, or just about anything. Sets are sometimes shown visually like this. But more often, you'll see sets written using a common math notation where some or all of the members of the set are put inside curly brackets with commas between them like this. A set can have a finite or an infinite number of elements. For example, a set containing all the letters of the alphabet has only 26 elements, while a set of all integers has an infinite number of elements. Okay, so a set is just a collection of things, and a function relates one set to another. But how exactly does it do that? Well, to understand how functions work, it will help if we start by naming the two sets, the input set and the output set. A function is something that takes each value from an input set and relates it or maps it to a value in an output set. And you'll often hear these input and output sets referred to by special math names. The input set is usually called the domain, and the output set is usually called the range. And it's really common to see some or all of a function's inputs and outputs listed in what we call a function table. A function table normally has two columns, one on the left for the input values and one on the right for the corresponding output values. The function itself is often written above the function table and in the form of some sort of mathematical rule or procedure. For example, let's say that the input set of a function is a list of common polygon names like triangle, square, pentagon, hexagon, and octagon. The function itself could be a simple rule that says output the number of sides. That means if we input triangle into the function, the output will be three. And if we input square, the output will be four. If we input pentagon, the output will be five, and so on. So this function simply relates the name of a polygon to its number of sides. That's cool, but most of the functions that you'll encounter in algebra will be a little more abstract than that. They'll usually just relate one variable to another variable in the form of an equation, like this one, y equals two x. In this equation, if we treat x as the set of numbers that we can input, the domain, and y as the set of numbers that we get as outputs, the range, 
What we have is a very simple algebraic function. And just like the polygon example, we can make a function table to show some of the possible input-output combinations. For this function, we could choose any number at all for the value of x. But to keep things simple, let's just try inputting 1, 2, and 3 as values of x and see what outputs we get for our table. If we input the value 1, in other words, if we substitute the value 1 for the x in our equation, then we get y equals 2 times 1, which simplifies to y equals 2. And since y is our output variable, we put a 2 in the output column. Next, if we input the value 2 into our function, we get y equals 2 times 2, which means y equals 4. So the output value is 4. And last, if we input the value 3 into our function, we get y equals 2 times 3, which means y equals 6. So the output value is 6. See the pattern? OK, so quick check for understanding. What variable is known as our input in a function? Type the answer in the chat. I've got the chat back on private. Or no, I don't. Now I do. OK, which variable is the input? Thank you, Menku. Thank you, Aries. Thank you, Navita. Thank you, Zachary. Thank you. Javon, thank you, Zach. Thank you, Celine. Thank you, Evelyn. Thank you, Gabby. No, just the X. The X is the input. It what goes in. Okay, which variable is the output? Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. So we call X the input and Y is the output. This right here, let me circle it. This is what we call, it's the equation, but it's also known as the rule of the function. In other words, when you put this input in, what do you do to it so this output comes out? And what we do is the rule, the equation. We take each x value and we multiply it by 2. So input times 2 output. 2 times 2 is 4. That's what comes out. 3 times 2 is 6. So I think this idea of input output, which we also call all the x values is called the domain, and all the y values is called the range of our function. I think that it helps us understand if we visualize something called a function machine. OK, so let me go ahead and go to that slide. And I think this will help you with your understanding of functions. OK, so think of a machine. Think of this as like a giant blender. OK, what am I going to put into the blender? Whatever I put in is called my x values. So if I put a 1 in and the machine cranks on it, it like blends it. It does something to it and then out pops a two. Then I put in the number two and out pops a four. And then I put in the number three, I crank it through the machine and out pops a six. If I was to say, what is the rule? Your answer would be, oh, you multiply each input by two. So that means each output Y equals two times each input. And then you can also represent it with a table. You guys are already familiar with tables from our unit on systems, but now we're just giving new names to the values in the table. The X's are all the inputs, the Y's are all the outputs, and then the rule is what do you do? with the inputs to create the outputs. Here's another analogy that I think will help you really understand the idea of a function. What if this was a giant blender and you put in the inputs of strawberries and bananas, and then you added some milk, ice cream, whatever your other ingredients, what kind of smoothie would you get? you would get a strawberry banana smoothie. That would be your output. Okay, so the inputs are your ingredients, your X values. The output is what comes out as a result of blending 
the ingredients in the function machine with the rule that you apply. In this case, my rule would be add milk, ice cream, whatever, blend it, and then out comes my strawberry banana smoothie. Now, one hugely important concept. Relations are just a set of points and relations can be plotted, but not every relation is a function. So here's a test to find out if your set of points is a function. For all your ingredients, you can only get one output. In other words, if I put in strawberries and bananas, I can't get a strawberry banana smoothie and a let me type it up here, a blueberry smoothie. Why not? Why can't I get those two different smoothies when I input mm. strawberries and bananas? Because you didn't put in um, blueberries into the equation. Exactly. So what that means mathematically, so that it, and this is such an important concept. I want you to make sure you have it in your notes. So I'm going to write it at the bottom here. To be a function, your the, we'll just call it the relation, can only have, let me stretch this out so that it doesn't get caught up. Okay, the relation can only have one, Y, remember the Y is the output for each input. Very important concept. And I'm going to show you three ways of determining that. One is going to be called mapping. A second way is from the table. And a third way is from what's called the vertical line test. So each input can only have one output. Now I'm going to show you what that looks like. If you didn't already get down what I put at the bottom of the slide, take a screenshot because I need to move on. The other way you can remember this is think of the smoothie analogy. I can't add strawberries and bananas and get a different, a second type of smoothie other than a strawberry banana smoothie. Okay, so let's transfer this to what's called mapping, because you can check for functions in mapping, or you can do it in tables or with the vertical line test. So what if my input is the happy face and my output is an eight? Good, I got one output for that input. Okay, what if my input is a square and my output is the number one? Good, I got one output for that input. Because remember, this represents X's and my output is my Y values. Okay, let's say I put in a heart and out comes a seven. So yes, this is a function, this first example, because I got one output for each input. Now let's look at this second one over here. For this one, I got the number one, but for the square, Two smoothies popped out. The three smoothie and the eight. Uh-uh-uh, I can't have more than one for each input. So this is a no. Now, this confuses some people. Can you have two different inputs that lead to the same output? Yes, this is okay. You can have two different X values, and I'm gonna show you what that looks like on a graph in just a second, that lead to the same Y value. That is okay. That is like your strawberries and your bananas still lead to a strawberry banana smoothie. Even if you put in the bananas first and then the strawberries, you still get the same smoothie. So this is still a yes. Okay, now how about this one over here? I have three different inputs that all lead to the same output. Yes or no, type your answer in the chat. A Y for yes, 
or an N for no? Is that a function? Yes or N no? It is a yes. Because remember, you can have a whole bunch of inputs that lead to the same output and it is still a function. And again, if you're confused on that right now, I think it's gonna clear it up when I show it to you on a graph. Oh, good Lord, we only have three minutes left. No matter how much time I add, wow, it seems like we never have enough. Okay, so this is lesson three in this week's module, which is the vertical line test. So this test, I think if you don't understand mapping, you will understand this test. The vertical line set test says, if you draw a vertical line anywhere on the graph, if it only intersects the graph at one point, you have a function because that means when like X equals negative two, there's only one place that vertical line crosses the graph. When X equals one, there's only one place the line crosses the graph. So that follows our definition of a function. We have one output Y for any input. Any input we have, we only have one output. But this down here is a no. And let me show you why. Notice when X equals negative one or one, positive one right there. If I draw my vertical line, notice that crosses in two places. So this is not a function because remember, you can only have one output. The Y is the output for every input, which is the X. But you can have two different X's that lead to the same output. Notice when X is negative two, Y is a positive two. But over here, when X is a positive two, Y is also a two. So you can have two different outputs for the same input, but you can't I'm sorry, the same output for two different inputs, but you can't have two outputs for the same input like in the one in the bottom right. Okay, here's your exit ticket. Using that rule, what if we have a table like this, let me erase this, and I'm trying to tell from the table whether this is a function or not. So again, here's what I want you to think about. If you have a different Y for every X, then it is a function. But if you have two different Ys for the same X, remember two different outputs for the same input, then it's not a function. 